what we call national broadband networks are going to be fundamental to everything that we want to do with ICT in the next few years. So the connectivity is going to support access to cloud and all the services we're going to build into that, a platform such as IoT. So it's absolutely fundamental that we finish the infrastructure layer to be able to move on to gain all these extra advantages. And so what we what we see is internet is a, is a platform for innovation and what we're going to do and innovate on top of that is fundamentally restructuring a lot of our industries to take advantage of the digital economy, join the international community in exchanging value. It's going to be a revolution in the next few years as all these countries come together to join the international digital community. We have several examples. A lot of the Asian rollouts have now finished, so we can look back and assess them quite candidly as to how well they did. So we have Malaysia, Singapore, New Zealand, all very successful in, in delivering what they set out to do, which is to deliver ultra-fast broadband to many people at affordable prices. So Huawei is very proud to be a long-standing member of the, the African uh, community. We've, been, uh, we've supplied a lot of equipment to a lot of operators to develop services here. And we believe you know, that, that's created a lot of change within African uh, society and delivered a lot, a lot of value to consumers. But more than that, we see, we see Africa as a, as a long-term partner for Huawei. Uh, we see a lot of pot potential here. The Chinese government is investing a lot of money. Huawei is, a, is very glad to be part of that development. So we, it's not the market share. We see this as a long-term relationship that's blossoming very well. Well, in Africa, clearly there's just two main thrust. We need to deploy more fixed fiber, fiber to the home. Uh, there's, a, there's a big need to deliver a lot of bandwidth to houses and, and industry. But on top of that then we will use uh, the existing 4G technology. We have 4G, 4.5G and, and that, deliver that much more widely, not just in the you know, central business district but out into the suburbs and into the rural areas because we're going to be using both fiber and wireless to, as the backbone to deliver all the next generation services. So we want uh, gigabit capable services wire, wired and wireless out to as many people as possible. Like, like a lot of countries, it's, it's difficult to turn the, uh, uh, the interest and the rhetoric into action. So it's about pulling the, um, the enthusiasm and the, the, the things that we can execute and pulling them together and collaborating and turning them into a successful project. So it's partly to do with execution. I see there's a lot of enthusiasm to, to build these uh, networks and systems, but it, it's, it's difficult to get everybody aligned and going in the same direction. So it's really a matter of, of everybody aligned aligning themselves to the same goal and then putting their foot on the gas. Actually, actually I believe all the large cities will become smart. It's inevitable because they all face the same problems that we're creating in cities. So there it's, it's environmental, it's traffic, it's security. We will naturally build uh, systems to solve these problems. So at the very least, we will build from the bottom up smart networks. And at some point, you will realize that when we start adding in some of the latest technologies, you know, uh, such as uh, big data and um, uh, smart use of sensors and IoT, cities will naturally be declared smart just because when we look back, all of this is delivering huge value on a, on a lifestyle and an environmental basis. So if you ask me, uh, do I think uh, there will be a smart, smart cities in Africa? Absolutely. You just look at the major cities and you see it already happening. And it's just a matter of time before, uh, as we develop the infrastructure, then we can then go back and develop the next generation of sensors and platforms. Well, we're cl we clearly haven't finished the infrastructure layer, and I think there's still a lot to do in the 4G sector. So I think there's a lot of a reason now to push strongly in 4G, 4.5G. That will bring a lot of data to a lot of people, and that that kind of uh, uh, availability of broadband access is then you're going to see a lot of services following. We'll be able to deliver high definition video. A lot of the it, it, the value of the internet will suddenly be available to a lot of people on their phones and homes. So it, we will. We'll see a great explosion of value created as we deploy these high-speed networks, particularly 4G. 
Ab absolutely. Forums like this are vitally important to bring all the stakeholders together. So industry, the policy makers, the, um, the people who are demanding the services. We want to hear all these different voices. And what we particularly want to hear is to start seeing where areas where we can find solutions. And I hear the buzz around the hall as people are searching for the linkages that they can make, either services they can develop, new connections, new ways of delivering services. So this is very much a networking event. It's a very good place to share the best ideas. Ideas. and it takes a long time sometimes but as we as we move forward absolutely vital part of the conversation and process of developing these systems within Africa